Hello, and welcome to another edition of Sermon Splash. This is where we go ahead and just set up the Sunday's sermon with uh, some thoughts and musings about, um, about where we are in the middle of the week. Or in my case, the uh, last couple Sundays ago where the Sermon Splash was basically the sermon um, and probably a better sermon than what I preached on Sunday morning. So that's just my, uh, my two cents, but you never know. So here we go with this week and, and we're still with Mark and Jesus is on the way. And on the way in the code word is code word of Mark for the fact that he's going to Jerusalem. He set his face there and he and he's preparing to die. And so he's telling the talking to the disciples about this. And they don't know what he's talking about. You know, the fact that the Son of Man is going to be handed over, crucified, dies, and will, will rise again. They don't have any idea about that. So what do they do with that? Um with this proposal, they understand there's going to be a void or a gap, and they're going to fill it. And the first spot there for me, and the first part of the sermon then, is about what is it about human beings? Or I know I can speak for myself. What is it about me that doesn't like a void? Those places in life where there's emptiness, where something's been taken away. Oftentimes it happens around a loss or or, or, so, or the, something like that. But whatever it is that we get these spaces where we're, we're in the wilderness or the desert and things are quiet and there, things aren't happening. We want them to go. And we're, we're unwilling um, to go ahead and just let things settle out. And so we jump in there. And the disciples jump in there with an argument, which is it's not, it's not uncommon. Oftentimes anger is a great way to fill a space because anger will take up a lot of space. It requires a lot of energy. And you might make the case that perhaps our whole country should have a timeout or a, a space just to go ahead and let a void happen because we sure seem to be um, an angry group right now. But anyway, back to the uh, sermon today. So th there's where Jesus is. And so this is whole idea about, um, about, about the void, about letting voids happen. And, and this is essential. I mean, this is, this, this, this is the building block of spirituality, right? Is the whole idea decreasing so that God can increase about stepping back from things and not having to jump right in. And in this case, it's pretty obvious that Jesus is allowing this void that's going to happen, not for the disciples to jump in and, and do their deal and climb over top of each other, but to allow the Holy Spirit to move in and, and direct the church into a new new places, which is what's going to happen on Pentecost. But it's only because the disciples were able to go ahead and step back that, that the Holy Spirit was ever able to move. And the same is true with us. Perhaps there's a spaces in our life where you and me can step back. Then the second part of the story is that Jesus, when he gets into the room uh, and begins to teach them, he, he, ga he gathers up a child and holds a child in his arm. And he says, if you want to get to the top, and this is what you're really working on or, or about, it's about starting at the bottom. And it seems to me what Jesus is really doing here is talking about a really important principle. And the principle is this whole idea of our authentic self, as uh, Bagger Vance says in, in, in the movie Bagger Vance. And this idea that um, in, in, in most religions and spiritualities, there is some kind of concept of reality returning to our original self. Um, the Hindus call it the Atman, and, and in the Buddhism, there's this whole idea of a uh, of oh, uh, what was your what was your face? Oh, what your face look like before you had a name? In other words, we have this authentic self, this person that we call in, in Christianity the image of God. Jesus talks a lot about it when he's talking to Nicodemus. You must go back and find your authentic self to be born again to start over. I love the idea of uh, pushing the reset button. Remember that one from. Uh, not Catherine Norris, but uh, Anne Lamott talked about the reset button. But they're all the same thing is to find that place within us where we can step back and start over. Jesus talks a lot about the lilies of the field. Consider them because they, when they're authentic self, they, they just do this stuff effortlessly. And when we're having to fight and struggle and push and all the rest to, to get things to go, and we find that we're just like walking in mud, it's, it's a good chance for us to understand that that's probably what's happening there is we need to push the reset button to start over and to, re, and to come back and return to, uh, again, our authentic selves, that place within us where there is creativity and, and there is wisdom and the capacity to, uh, to find our way out of spaces. But we'll never get there, you see, if, if there's too much cacophony. So, so voids or empty spaces are essential, you know, in our, in our lives and essential for us to return to. And so Jesus is, is talking about a spiritual discipline where this is what we do. We, we do it consciously. We say, you know what, uh, for today, I'm going to go ahead and start over. I'm going to go ahead and just lose some of this stuff. And when we lose our life, 
as Jesus says we find it. So this is a great time for us as we enter into the fall and it's kind of melancholy. You start to see some, you know, the days are getting shorter and a little chillier and the trees are beginning to shed their leaves. And perhaps this is a time for us as uh, perhaps me or, you know, getting in touch with some of our own uh, melancholy thoughts and the like, just to let them go a little bit, let some space be created, see what happens. It's okay. You know, we don't have to rush in and fill every void as the disciples are trying to do. And, and when we uh, figure that out and we practice that, we we automatically set God up for the opportunity to do what God does best. And that is to go ahead and, and move in and, and hover about uh, void spaces and to create new things. And so uh, for all of us, uh, let us create a void or allow a void to happen, to let some space happen and understand that as God says in the scripture, I am always about doing a new thing. All right. Okay. I'll see you. Uh, see you later. It's good to be with you.